My name is Teata, bearer of the morning. I am Chickasaw and a storyteller. And this is my story. There are horses of many colors, brown, black, yellow, white, yet they are all one horse. There are birds of many colors, red, blue, green, yellow, yet they are all one bird. So with cattle, so with all living things, so with men in this land where one was only Indians are men of every color yet they are all one people that this should come to pass was at the heart of the great mystery And I solemnly promise, as a duly elected governor of the Chickasaw Nation, that each man, woman, and child will have a homestead of 320 acres. It is my pride and ambition of my life to aid in securing the happiness and prosperity of our people and to receive the plaudits Congratulations and goodwill of our guardians, the United States government. Eugene, run ahead and get in the wagon situated, okay? Now, Mayor Francis, your daddy and I have a party in honor of your Uncle Doug. But I want to go. It's for grown-ups, and I know you think you are, but you are not. Now, you go on with your brother, and he and Selena are in charge, you hear me? And you need to be helping your sister put baby Gladys down. And I don't want you back talking or running off. I know. You hear me? Where? Mary Francis! No, I've been meaning to ask. How you doing? What do you think about treasure? But I don't know anything about politics. Exactly. An honest man. Hey, whoa, whoa. Not so fast. Hey, now, who's this little whirlwind? Hi, Uncle Doug. <laughs> Mary Francis. Don't be bothering the governor. No, it's all right. Uncle Doug, can't you pass the law so I could come tonight? <laughs> Hard to say no to such a charming constituent. But you'd be bored silly in there. Then let's go find your brother and no more running. But, Mama... No. It's a special little girl you got there, TB. Yeah. What we're doing in this building, most of all, is protecting their future. Then you're gonna need a good treasure. Your office is upstairs. It's the one with your name on the door. <laughs> In the beginning, everything was covered with water. The only living were a few small animals upfloat on a raft. Not knowing what to do, the crayfish volunteered and dove off the raft into the great ocean. He tried every day to reach the bottom, and on the fourth day, he did. He built a great mud chimney that stuck up above the surface of the water. The mud spread out and created a newly formed earth. It is from this mud chimney that the Chickasaw and the Choctaw people were allowed to come and live upon the new surface with all the animals.
Sugar's putting her down. I got dinner boiling. Have a... What's the matter, Sugar Plum? Oh. Where's Gladys? She's still sleeping? Yeah. You see Mary? You're not back from school? No. What's the mags about? Mrs. Bernstein paid with him. Again, Thomas, you hear that cackling outside? We got our own chickens. We got plenty of eggs. She's got a new mouth to feed, Bertie. It's tough on her. <sighs> How's work? Cash strapped. Store or the nation? Both. But Johnson wants to start charging ranchers a fee for grazing on our land. It's about time. He's gonna go to Washington, get our funds released for the schools. That's good. School is the only way our kids are gonna make something of themselves. Hope them funds include interest. Tornadoes are coming. Where were you? Uh, listening to the corn grow. Look at you. You are filthy. And where are your school books? I can't run with them books, Mama. Well, you can't study without them, and now you're making me and your daddy late. Can I come? No, you're going to your sister's house. Selena's house is boring. I want to go with you. Well, you're too young. But I'm two hands old. You're how old? Two hands. Thumbs included? Yep. OK, then. You get yourself cleaned up. Okay. She's ready. We are all sparks from Abba Benili. He scatters us out here and there to make light. And when we die, he gathers us up so as to make one big blaze to show us the house of Abba Benili. allowed between the elder and the fire. Ever. I'm sorry. What you say, Daddy? What can we do for you, Johnston? Our funds that you hold in trust, I need them released to the Chickasaw people so we can invest in education. Ah, and so that's what this is all about. Uh, wanting more money from the U.S. government. I am trying to help my people. And we are trying to build a nation, which we hope will include your people. After they assimilate, of course. If you can't beat them, you might as well join them. Which brings me to another man, the Code of Indian Offenses. <laughs> and uh, what of the Indian, Senator, do you find so offensive? We can't have Americans engaging in unsavory activities that the U.S. deems illegal. Unsavory activities? Pagan dances, witch doctor rituals. The old tribal mumbo-jumbo. Come on now, Johnston. Don't you want to pull your people up out of the Dark Ages? Imagine. One day, with proper governing, the Indian acting and looking just like the white man. One nation under God, not several nations under numerous gods. Senator Judd, we have dealt with the white man for over 350 years. We dress like the white man, attend church, educate our children in schools as good, if not better, than any state in the Union. We have done all that the U.S. government has asked of us. In return, 
We only ask that our funds be released so we can continue to provide for our people. We will have a committee look into that matter. Oh, yes. Just as soon as we're back in session. We are a patient people. We will get what is ours, even if it takes a hundred years. Good day, gentlemen. My advice to you, Governor, join the American spirit of entrepreneurship. Don't look for handouts. No, no, let your people pull themselves up by their bootstraps. And join the future like the rest of us have. I assure you, sir, my people do not need lessons in hard work, grit, or making a living off the land. Good day. Why all that is sacred, what do they want of us? Not to exist. We got a history of that. I'm afraid it looks like we might have to move out of the Capitol building TV. I don't know right. what we're gonna do now. Well, it's not just us, Governor. A lot of people have been bent on that life. We'll figure something out. My daddy told stories of our trail of tears. How in 1837, we arrived in new lands called Indian Territory. It was hard times, but like my daddy says, the Chickasaws will never be conquered. But to live is to change. And that is what happened in 1906. We now faced maybe our biggest challenge. They were breaking up our government for one of their own, a state called Oklahoma. When the world was still young, there was but one man upon it. Seeing that he was lonesome, the Great Spirit sent a son. They walked upon the earth and found it good, but it was too cold. There were no trees and no flowers to make the world beautiful. One night, the young brave had a dream, and he told his father it would be through sacrifice that beauty will walk upon the earth. I'll give myself to the great spirit, said the sun, and from his grave sprung the first pine tree, and from that came all the other beautiful trees. Senator Judd is a committee chairman. Indian offenses. People are afraid of what they don't know. Go on, wash up, you three. Yes, Daddy! <laughs> wash up now. Yes, yes, Mama. Gladys, go to the kitchen and get the rolls. Yes, Mama. Come sit down. Cook said if you don't come in here... Yes, yeah, Cook said he's gonna throw it all away if it gets cold. Yes, we know. And Lord, we ask for protection and provision over this family and over our people. Amen. 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 So, Mary, when do you leave for college? Well, um, <clears throat> still going to Oklahoma College for Women over in Chickasha? Well, we was concerned about tuition, but uh, she's going on a grant now. Arts grant. Well, I'd prefer she stick around here, like her older brothers and sisters. Nice and normal. 
You hear that there was uh, more bodies found from Lusitania? Unfortunately, there are still over 1,200 passengers unaccounted for. Including Charles Froman. And for those who hear my soul sobbing in its darkest hour, I leave you the legacy of my uncharted future, flung far among a field of stars. Mary, where did you learn that? She learned it from when the Froman play came through town. She can say the whole thing. Can't you, Mary? <laughs> yep. Is this what we have in store for after meal entertainment? Unthrifty loveliness, what dost thou spend upon thy so She'll get over it. Legacy. She lends right. to those who are free. <laughs> Mary? Yeah? Take this here basket on up to the Brewster's place. How come I have to go? Because they got eight mouths to feed in these poor church mice. That's why. Well, if they have eight mouths, then it seems to me like they have 16 feet. Mary? Drinking my water and eating my dry. Look at me. Acoustic It's the last time I'm gonna tell okay. you. No English. Speak English. You know what I'm saying. Okay. Speak English. Okay. I want you to stay off this property. All you Indians are the same. You think this is your land. You look at me when I'm talking to you. Okay. Acoustic I want you to stay off this property. Your mother home? You speak English? Ah! What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me! Help! <laughs> Here. Tell Bertie we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Could I offer you some coffee? Uh, thank you, ma'am. I best be on my way. It weren't always like this. Just hard times is all. It'll get better. Come on, boys. Let's go eat. Come on. Anytime an Indian tangles with a white man, a white man always, always wins. But every time, she shouldn't have been out there alone, Bertie. She shouldn't, she shouldn't be going anywhere alone. She, 
she should stay right here where I can keep her safe. I can keep her safe. Right, you'll see that she gets a taxi cab as soon as she gets to Chickasha. Yes, sir. She'll be fine. First train ride by herself. I understand, sir. for women? So you're going to college, are you? Don't believe I've ever seen an Indian up at the school before. You are Indian, aren't you? Didn't have those kind of opportunities when I was your age. One quart of Choctaw. Just enough to make it tough in a white man's world. Young lady, you make the most of this. You're doing it for all of us. Bennett, your roommate, Mary Frances Thompson. <laughs> um, this, these are my friends. I'm Margaret. Hi, I'm Mary, Mary Thompson. This is my roommate. It's so nice to see OCW accepting all types. Yes, we Indians are very grateful. Well, I'm sure glad that you're here. If, if you need anything at all, our room's just down the hall on the right. Why don't we go see if Wendy came in yet? Thank you for all your letters, Mama. With all the exciting things college has to offer, I can barely find time to reply. Everybody here is so, uh, accepting and welcoming. I've been learning so much. Between my studies, all my new friends, and all the social events, I barely have any time to myself. Give Daddy my love. I'm so glad things are going good for you, Mary. Things are great at home, too. And it's a good Lord's timing, because another baby's on its way. If it's a boy, we're naming him after your father, Thomas Benjamin Jr. Don't wear yourself out with parties. You're there for your education. Go ahead and have your fun, but keep them grades up, too. Love, Mama.
You speak Sparrow. Um, my accent's a little rough. <laughs> and what did our little friend have to say? She was wondering why she left the nest. Because it's the only way to learn to soar. I'm Miss Davis. Mary Francis. And I'm wondering, Mary, why you didn't sign up for my class. What's your fifth period? My only free time? Was your only free time. Theater room, tomorrow. The theater room? It's in the basement. You'll find it. And what class is it? Expression. Good afternoon, girls. Good afternoon, Miss Davis. So I take it everyone is working on their monologues to razzle and dazzle us. <laughs> so how many of you are actually serious about a career on stage after graduation? Ah. Well, I feel it is my duty to inform you that only a small percentage of people actually make a living performing. So today, we are going to talk about those who made it. Who's your favorite actress? Sarah Bernhardt. Yes. Sarah Bernhardt has been called the most famous actress that ever lived. And I think that's a, an accurate statement. But did you also know that she lost a leg mid-career? And yet she went on to have a brilliant career without the aid of an artificial limb. Fate took her leg, but it didn't take what's inside, the passion and the ability to say something. That's what will separate you from the masses. Charm will deceive, beauty will fade, <laughs> but a woman with conviction will last forever. So what do you have to say? What stories do you have to tell? That's what I want to know. That's what this class is all about. You can do it. All of you. Welcome. And now, um, we're gonna talk about Sarah Bernhardt's most controversial role, Hamlet where she played the lead. Yes, a woman can play a man's role. A whole lot more convincing than a man can play a woman's role. <laughs> Why would I dare to think that you would understand? Yes, you who hears my soul weeping in its darkest hour. I offer you a legacy of my uncharted future flung far among the field of stars. That was terrific. Froman, isn't it? Is that what you're doing for the class monologue? Probably Shakespeare. You? Shakespeare. Does everyone need to do monologue? Oh, yeah, no escaping it. I could accompany you if you want. Some music, maybe piano. Really? Sure, might boost the dramatic impact of it. So where are you from? I was born in Emmett. It's a little town, you probably never even heard of it. My folks live in Tishmingo now. I know Tishmingo. Are you Chickasaw then? You got me. Indian stories, like the myths and legends. I'm serious. I know nothing, nothing about your people. I mean, other than my dad always saying stupid things. Come on. You gotta give me something. Please. Pretty please. <laughs> my father used to tell me this one. The stage is yours. Old Earth Maker made everything the way that he wanted. But one day, he looked down 
and he saw Rabbit <laughs> shivering in the cold. Rabbit did not want to be this way. So he began to make a little song and a little dance so that he could try to tell Earthmaker how he wanted to be. Hermia wheresoe'er she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright, not with salt tears? If so, my eyes are oftener washed than hers. No, I am as ugly as a bear, for beasts, when they see me, they run away in fear. Oh. Pardon my interruption. Hi, Miss Davis. Uh, please do continue. Uh, I was just going over uh, what to do for class, and I was looking at... Mm -hmm. Midsummer Night's Dream. You were very good. Thank you. You know, Mary, I've been given these monologues for years and years, and everyone does Shakespeare. Everyone. Did you know you're the first Indian that ever enrolled at OCW? And that's not a crutch. It's an advantage. What could you show me that I haven't seen before? What can you offer that all these little sugar cookies can't? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want to see. See you in class. Thank you, Miss Davis. Should you ask me when these legends and traditions, I should answer, I should tell you, in the bird's nest of the forest, in the hoof print of the bison, in the airy of the eagle, Listen to these Indian legends. Like a death web spun twixt the setting moon and the rising sun, our glory sinks like the sinking moon. The red man's race shall perish soon for feet shall trip where the web is spun. For no dawn shall be ours and no rising sun. No dawn is ours and no rising sun. So tell me, what will you do next? Um, 
continue my studies and then maybe New York? Broadway? Wow. Well, I think I might have just the launching pad for you. Carnegie? Carnegie Tech. My old alma mater. The best theater company in the country. Yes, I know. <laughs> but they would never accept me and I couldn't afford no, it. No, no, no. One thing at a time. I just mailed my recommendation along with your application. Now, it includes a few embellishments, ones that I hope that you will fulfill for me this summer. When does your train leave? 2.30. Perfect. Just enough time to meet a very dear friend of mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Great, mind. great, everyone. Take a break. You must be Mary Francis. I'm Thurlow Lawrence, and this is the Chautauqua Tour. 32 towns in 40 nights. It's education, it's entertainment, it's fun for the entire family, and it is the most American thing in all of America. But, as I told Miss Davis, I must have an Indian act. I must have you. Knock on wood. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Uh, when is it? Now. This summer? Uh, my dear, there is no time like the present. Or the immediate future, right? Have a seat. A leg? Some years ago, I was traveling by wagon out west on a music gathering expedition. When a blizzard sprung up and turned the world white, you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. And before long, we had plunged into a crevasse. My leg was smashed. I was trapped beneath the wagon. I couldn't move and I had been left for dead. I lay there, drifting in and out of consciousness. And suddenly, I began to hear music. It was strange music. Drums and rattles and gongs and these marvelous rhythms that I had never heard before. The music seemed to grow stronger and stronger and stronger. And then silence. I woke in a sea of warm blankets. The room was lit by fire, and an Indian doctor was wiping my brow. He had done what he had to do. He amputated my leg. But in taking it, he saved my life. The music, was it real? As real as life itself. To me, the music that I heard was the music of the spirits come to save my life. And ever since that day, I have made it my life's work to bring the music of the Indians to people everywhere. So what do you say? Do I have my Indian act? Uh, may I bring my piano player with me? Deal. Welcome aboard. There she is. Mama! Daddy! <laughs> oh. Look at you, all educated. Hi, Mama. <laughs> so I know you're just back and all, but I've spoken to the local school, and they're looking for a teacher's aid. That's great, Daddy. Uh, let's talk about it at home. OK. Say what? Well, Carnegie's across the whole country. I mean, aren't you educated enough? Let's discuss this when she's accepted. I'm gonna get accepted. I just don't want you getting your hopes up. Things are more challenging for people in our situation. You mean being Indian? That's not a crutch, Mama. It's an advantage. Well, I can't afford it. Well, maybe I can. Touring with some freak show. Mama, talk to him. He 
hasn't been just right lately. And the idea of you out there in the big white world. He wants me to stay here and become a teacher and behave like a nice, normal There's person. There's nothing wrong with nice or normal. <sighs> but we bring you up to know your own mind and to follow where God leads you. And if that means going cross country and getting up on a stage, well, then you best get up on it. Okay? Okay? Centuries ago, before the white man, our people, restless and tired, searched desperately for a place to call home. And every night, at the end of the long journey, they stuck a sacred pole on the ground so that it pointed straight toward the heavens. And every morning, whichever way it leaned, they traveled until finally, it leaned no more. The pole did not bring us here. The white man forced us here. But now, this is our home. And we don't have to wander anymore. And neither do you. I love that story, Daddy. And that's why I have to go. So that I can tell our stories. What's your stage name? Mary Frances Thompson is the name of my daughter, not a performer. What about what Uncle Doug used to call it? Iola Ahoy. Mama, people have to be able to pronounce it. What was it Aunt Mary called her when she was a baby? Teata. Teata? I love it. What, what does it mean? Bear of the morning. That's perfect. That's because you start crying every day at the crack of dawn for hours and nobody could shut you up. <laughs> <laughs> she feels like a dang rooster, wouldn't she, Bertie? <laughs> Summer's been exhausting, but I never felt more alive. 
I met with this Seminole woman after my last performance, and she asked me if I could tell the stories of her people. Now, word is spreading, and I'm meeting with various tribes wherever I go. They share their stories with me, so that I may share them with the whole world. Travel too. Oh, that man. When is he gonna stop? Wait. All forms of Indian rituals are prohibited. You can't sell traditional items. Is this true? In theory, not in practice. That's what they say. Carnegie. Rejected. Hmm. Don't you dare take joy in this. I wouldn't even dream of it. I think it's a sign. Fate has spoken. Mama? Yeah, honey? Can you take me to the train station? Wait, no, Mary? Mary Frances, where are you going now? Can I go too, Daddy? No, you ain't going anywhere, young lady. Oh, Thomas, when are you going to learn? You can't keep a Thompson girl down. Birdie. Come on, honey. Come on. See you later, Daddy! Hey, do you hold on. I'm the man of the house here. Mr. Stevens, please. Do you have an appointment? I'm sure I do. I, I send a telegram. Your name? Tiara Thompson. <sighs> Please have a seat. Thank you. Miss Thompson? Yes, Tiara Thompson. Yes. Well, I believe you've gotten our letter. Yes, and I thought I'd get a chance to audition. Audition? <laughs> yes. Well, enrollment is closed, dear. You try again in the spring, all right? Which way is the theater? That way. Now, now hold on a second. Just what do you think you're doing? Miss, stop. Stop! Miss, stop. Stop! We are getting ready for a production here. Mr. Stevens, I just traveled 1,117 miles to get here. I would really love a chance to audition for you. I can't accept you alone. There is a committee. Well, how long would it take to get them all here? <sighs> Give me 10 minutes. Thank you, sir. The circle of the earth is the head of a great drum. With the day, it grows upward, booming. I think they're in the theater. Who is the drummer who beats upon the earth drum? Who is the drummer 
who makes me dance to this song. I think we can find a place for you. Another postcard from Mary. Well, it's been a year. Tell me she's coming home. New York City. Tell Daddy not to worry. Miss Davis has me staying at the Three Arts Club. It's for actresses starting out. And she's going to set up some private performances so I can earn my keep. It's uh, ten blocks this way. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm here to check in. Uh, it's about name? time you got here. Margaret? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? I live here. And when Miss Davis told me you were coming, I traded out my roommate for you. <laughs> I'll show her up. Thank you. Thank you. Ta-da! Oh, my! This is so perfect. Oh, oh wow. So, uh, so what are we gonna do now? Rest. Tomorrow, you hit the ground running. Big ever. Got to get to my paying gig now at the theater. I've been here for almost a year and nothing. I'm running out of money. I can see if they have an opening at the theater. <laughs> Thanks, anyways. Miss Davis has scheduled four private performances next week. Well, you gotta make some good scratch. But I'm in New York for Broadway. Hey. Keep pounding. Something eventually is gonna break. What if it's me? Unbreakable. Bye. Bye. Once there was a young maiden, and she lived by a beautiful stream. One day, she looked into the stream at her reflection. Oh my, she said. I'm beautiful enough for any man. <laughs> so she walked down to the river bank. Anybody around here want a wife? And somebody answered, I want a wife. I want a wife. Well, what shall we live on if we live together? We will live on grass. Oh, I can live on grass. Grass is much too coarse for a good-looking girl like me. So she walked on down the banks of the river and sang again. Anybody around here want a wife? Someone answered, I want a wife. What shall we live on if we live together? We will live on seeds. <gasps> oh, I love seeds. <laughs> She was so pleased with him, and he was so pleased with her. And together, they flew down the banks of the river because they were the first birds of spring. Say, Arta, <laughs> would you take questions? Of course. What tribe are you from, dear? 
I am Chickasaw. My father is Chickasaw. My mother is of German descent. Then you are half Chickasaw. No, ma'am. My heart and soul are 100% Chickasaw. With the Indian Offenses Act, are songs and dances like this illegal? The Bible says God's words brought the world to being. We Chickasaw believe his words came as a song. And if sharing this song is illegal, well, there's not much else to sing about then. <laughs> as this is a private event, I assure you it is well within the law, but... I remind each of you to support Governor Roosevelt in his upcoming election. Mrs. Roosevelt and he are big supporter of the arts and will make events like this legal for all. Is there anything that the white man does that you would deem offensive? I think the only thing that upsets Indians the most is to find that the white man grows perfectly good corn and never sings over it. Excuse me. Uh, remarkable. Well, thank you. Uh, Clyde Fisher. Teata. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, something to do with uh, the daybreak, yes? Fear of the morning. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> How did you know? Oh, uh, well, though I'm a, a professor, I am always a student of Indian culture. And what do you teach? Well, my, my first love is astronomy. Uh, but I also teach zoology, uh, paleontology, anthropology, uh, geology. Gee, am I boring you? No. No, no it's, uh, it's quite remarkable. <laughs> what got you interested in Indian culture? Well, I, I was on an expedition out west, and I was adopted by the Sioux tribe. My Indian name, though lacking in the imagery of Teata, certainly was fitting. <laughs> They called me afraid of bear. <laughs> <laughs> you were tremendous. Here, here. Thank you, <laughs> Dr. Fisher. Ma'am, I, I certainly hope to see you and your husband out at the Natural History Museum tomorrow for the planetarium's unveiling. It's a mm -hmm. small gathering. It, it, it's open to the public as well. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'll leave you ladies to it. <laughs> Your performance, my dear, was absolutely breathtaking. I have never experienced that sense of spirit. You absolutely glow, my dear. Messenger, drop this off. It's casting services. Thank you. <laughs> I got it! I got it! Hey, got what? A role? A real role on Broadway! What? <laughs> it says, the red poppy it says right here, opens December 19th. It's not the lead, but it, it's fourth on the billing. Who cares? <laughs> it's Broadway! We have to celebrate! What are you doing tomorrow? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, the Museum of Natural History. Do you want to come? I'll pass. <laughs> when I get off work tonight, we are celebrating! Yeah. <laughs> In creating the planetarium, I had one simple task. To take one of the most difficult subjects, one that we cannot reach out and touch, and make it understandable. Not only to a man or a woman, but to a child. Uh, tonight, I will explain our approach to that conundrum. Drum. But first, I would like to say how much it means to see you here this evening. I was traveling in Germany about two years ago, and I had the good fortune to meet with a man named Carl Zeiss. How do you know so much? I have a love of learning. Right now, we're walking between 600 and 700 miles per hour, based on the constant rotation of the Earth. Why waste the momentum? <laughs> what I say. Hmm. I never thought of it that way before. It is imperative to open people's minds to new things. Ignorance breeds fear. And the only way to conquer that is to make the unknown known. 
I think I would agree with that. <laughs> I would say more than agree. Each time you take the stage, you bring light to a dark world. I give these uh, small outdoor talks to a, a camp of young little rascals at Bear Mountain uh, up north. They come from poor homes, but their minds are sponges. This may be the only bit of nature they ever get to see. Would you, would you consider performing for them? Well, it sounds lovely, but I just landed a Broadway role. Congratulations! <laughs> huh. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, it's my first role, so I, I need to stay focused. No, of course, of course, of course. I, uh, perhaps another time. That's, that's wonderful. Can I offer you a celebratory meal? I'd love that. Perfect. <laughs> You decent? Yes. It is still a buzz out there. It's electric. What a run. You were wonderful. How does it feel? Mm. I thought I'd be more excited. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not sure. I feel off is all like, like something's missing. Must be the empty stomach. Hmm, must be. I have made us dinner reservations. That should help. You think that we can go somewhere where I don't have to think or talk or be somebody? Yes, of course. Uh, there's a, a film playing across the street, a new film. Darkened room, moving pictures, music, popcorn, I guess. It's perfect. I can sufficiently describe the feeling. Those last few notes, like, like a wave coming over the audience, and they are completely... Oh, watch your step. Are you okay? Yeah, I thought I saw something. Say. Woo -woo. <laughs> we want him chug chug with knees. Let's get out of here. No, 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 no. It's not you. That's how they see me. It was a cartoon. It was a stupid cartoon. About a stupid Indian. Not about you. <laughs> I was so stupid thinking that I could come to Broadway and, and make a difference. Why did you pursue the performing arts? To pretend to be other people? No. Then why? Do you know how I made astronomy interesting to adults? By making it interesting to a child. 
If a child could understand it and enjoy it, an adult could too. Then what are you getting at? You need to get away. You need to get away. You remember the camp that I told you about? Let's do that. Let's do that this weekend. I don't know. I will cancel my meeting on Friday morning, and I will drive you up there myself. If I can make time in my busy schedule for a mountain trip, then certainly you can, too. It would be a wonderful adventure. I want to focus on Broadway. Maybe it's not about what you want to do. Maybe it's about what you were meant to do. I'd need a canoe. All set. <laughs> oh, bon voyage. Don't drown. Oh, great explorer. I'll see you on the other side of the lake. Chickasaw Indian from the state of Oklahoma, and also a storyteller. Indians are the natives of this land. They belong here. Everything that they learn, they learn from nature. Today, my soul really needed this. <laughs> so did mine. <laughs> Come look. What are we looking at? Oh, it is a heavenly sight. Oh, really? How did? You how did you get that in there? That's not an answer. <laughs> My darling Indian princess, will you marry me? Yes. I, I mean, no. No? You have to ask my father. Let's go. Oh, you don't know my father. My dear, I have camped in sub-zero temperatures in Lapland. I have swam with crocodile and piranha in Peru. I have climbed into the mouth of a boiling volcano. I, I think I can... You my father. I better go first and, um, pave the way. Where's Daddy? 
Well, he's not feeling too good. Something's happened. What? I still can't believe three men came into Daddy's store and took Ware's away. Just some things to do with our culture. Did you call the sheriff? Honey, the government was who took him. Agents enforcing the Code of Indian Offenses. It's about all his heart could take. But he's a Thompson. He'll get through it. I'm gonna tell Clad not to come. If you are serious about this man, then we need to meet him. Way to kick him when he's down. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Shame on the government. It's not right. No, it's nothing new, sweetie. You need anything? Uh, water, thanks. Okay. What's gonna happen to the store? Oh, a small fine. Trouble is, those baskets are made by locals who need money to put food on the table. Any plans by your home? Uh, Miss Davis set up a small performance at the local school. I was actually hoping uh, Uncle Doug and Betty could come. Oh, I bet they'd be delighted. And maybe even Daddy, too, if he's, he's feeling better. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see about that. crazy now's not the time to be promoting our culture she feels it's exactly the right time well it just caused more trouble why can't she just get a normal job just thought i'd ask she's gonna do it so well i don't need to see it okay
ever since I saw her perform, I just knew. Took a little while for fate to agree with me. Traveling here must be nothing when you travel everywhere. <clears throat> Mr. Thompson, I'm Clyde Fisher. Perhaps you should have gone with Afraid of Bear. <laughs> Let me try Man to Boy. And so, Mr. Thompson, I would like your blessing to marry your daughter, Mary Frances. How old are you? I am 17 years her senior. The white hair came early. Hmm. You want to marry my daughter? Yes, sir. Well, I want you to do something for me. Anything. Bring her home. Have her stop all this globe-trotting business. And if what you say is true and you can provide, then she can settle down. Nice and normal. Here, with her people. Sir, I'm not sure we're talking about the same woman. To think that I would be able if willing, which I'm not, to put a leash on her. Well, in my opinion, that's a quite impossible task. Yeah. Sounds like the same woman. Mr. Thompson, your daughter has a gift. She can open up the eyes of the world to the Chickasaw people, to all Indians, simply by telling stories. I mean, have you seen her perform? This is her home. And she will always come home to you. She can love me half as much as she loves you. That will make me the happiest man in the world. Mr. Thompson, I'm not asking for an answer this instant. I will wait as long as it takes. And I will abide by your decision. Well? No answer. Yet. <laughs> well, I'm proud of you, afraid of bear. Why don't you two go for a drive and let me work on old Papa Bear? I think you're gonna adjust the place. It's beautiful. It has been my cathedral since I was a child. Mm. Long ago, my people, they were searching for a place to call home. Ahead of them was a great white dog, Ophi Toby. Ophi Toby? Mm hmm. He traveled far ahead of them, always on alert and always warned of any dangers. He was their faithful guard and scout. Mm -hmm. And then one day, they came to a great river. They called it Misha Sipokne. The Mississippi. They knew home was across the river. They knew home was somewhere on the other side of the wide, wide river before them. So quickly, 
they assembled rafts to cross. The first raft carried a group of men and the beloved white dog. But the raft, it broke apart. All the men made it to shore. But the beloved white dog, standing proud on drifting wood, vanished down the river. Did they ever find out what happened to the dog? No. But some say he can still be seen guiding our people. of thy meat. I will do honor to thy courage, to thy strength, and to thy beauty. Next, I will tell you a story my father told me when I was young. There are birds of many colors, red, blue, green, and yellow. Yet, it is all one bird. There are horses of many colors, black, brown, yellow, and white. Yet, it is all one horse, so with cattle, so with men. In this land where one was only Indian, is now men of every color. All this came to pass in the heart of the mystery. Remember who you are, Teata. Broadway will keep calling Hollywood, too. But you tell the story you were meant to tell. I won't let you down. Oh, don't you worry about me. You're doing it for them. Thank you for everything. Oh. And thank you. What for? Helping me be me.
wish your father well. I will. And once he's better, I shall come back to you, my love. I look forward to both of those things. And write. Sorry. Write to me. Every day. Your letters mean the world. Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot to give these to you. Your mail from Margaret. I love you, my princess. And I love you, afraid of bear. Oh. How's Daddy? Wasn't doing so good last night. I could swear he'd been crying. But he's never cried before a day in his life. I know. It's got me worried. What is it? The White House? Roosevelt? Well, it's less than a week. Come here. <laughs> I was invited perform at the White House for President Roosevelt's first day dinner. But I won't go if you promise not to die. I'll stay right here. went to college. I didn't like it. But you went on that summer tour. Didn't like. Pittsburgh. No way. New York. No. And I'll never forgive myself if you don't go to that White House. I'm sorry. You know that first stomp dance I ever took you to? And an elder took you aside and said, Nashku Shikonopa Yishanole. I remember. What he said was that someday you would become the storyteller. I knew deep down he was right, but I was scared. I was selfish. I didn't want to share you. When you were just a little girl, your Uncle Doug went to Washington when they tried to get rid of us. And now you will return and show them that we are alive and well. And that the Chickasaw are unconquered and unconquerable. And then you come back home. Because we've got a wedding to plan. <laughs>
Welcome, Te Ata. <laughs> so pleased you're going to be spending the night in the White House. Uh, here t tonight. Didn't they tell you? In the Lincoln bedroom. We'll arrange for some things. Pardon me, Mrs. Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. My, you are looking ravishing. <laughs> Senator Judd. Teata, you are very well known to my people. Your people? You'll find out soon enough, Senator. Let <clears throat> me show you to your room. This evening would not be complete without you. Do try to get a bit of rest before your performance tonight, my dear. Mrs. Roosevelt, thank you for everything. To my friends, I am Eleanor. <laughs> Mr. Lincoln, there's an Indian girl in the White House, and it's right that she should be here. My name is Teata, bearer of the morning. I am Chickasaw and a storyteller, and this is the story of my people. Long ago, the great creator brought together two brothers, the Choctaw and the Chickasaw. The brothers sought out new lands and journeyed with the protection of Ofi Tobi, the white dog. They brought with them the sacred leaning pole that gave them direction. Finally, they found new lands, and the one brother, Chickasaw, went in one direction and Choctaw in the other. And by doing this, they created two powerful nations. And they sang a song. Abba Benili walks in good ways. He reminds us through our ancestors how all this beauty came to be. Me Umakula. This is not the end of the story. Stir my heart. Show me. Don't walk alone 
toward the rising sun walk into worlds to live as one hear our voice join our song the new dawn has come the right. 